You're listening to Give Yourself Some Leeway with me, your host, Eugene Lee. I've spent the last four years trying to discover how to break the burnout cycle. And as a high achiever in a fast paced world, it's very easy to slip into the old habits that leave you feeling overwhelmed and left behind. And if you're anything like me, then you need to hear this. It's not your fault. Each episode is dedicated to breaking the stigma around mental health in the workplace, ending burnout culture for good, and the action steps that you can take today to do your part towards personal growth and success. And I'm so happy that you are here today. There can be a lot of misconceptions about what burnout really is. I've been approached by people saying that, oh, I burn out every Tuesday and I'm okay again by like Thursday or Friday, but I can feel it again next Monday or Tuesday morning. Yeah, I'm really burnt out. And that to me sounds more like a really bad hangover. Or some people say, oh, I burn out every time I have a monthly meeting with my manager. And it's like, Mm, I don't think that's burnout. I think you just get really stressed or maybe you're really fed up in your role and you're just not aligned with. That doesn't mean that you're burnt out. It just means that maybe you're just a bit fed up. And sometimes people underplay what burnout really is because maybe they just have misconceptions or they don't really understand what it is. And that can have an effect that people either over dramatize burnout or they underplay it. They're like, oh, it's just burnout. It's just one of those things. I'll be over it by next Tuesday and it's not really going to affect me. I just need to get back to work. So what I want to cover today is some common misconceptions people have around burnout and how to recognize burnout and how to address it. Maybe you're burnt out yourself and you're just not recognizing it properly for the significance it has on your life. Or maybe someone else around you, in your family, uh, in your profession, is experiencing burnout and you don't know how to address them, how to empathize with them and make sure that they get the support they need. So one of the most common misconceptions of burnout is that it's just the same thing as stress. Burnout, stress, synonymous. Burnout and stress have similarities, but they're they're very different concepts. Stress is a normal human response to a challenging situation, while burnout is a prolonged state of this, of physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion and yes this is really this is often linked to state of chronic stress if you're constantly in this stress cycle it can be physically mentally and emotionally exhausting so while burnout and stress yes have similar symptoms stress can be momentary it's you can experience a moment of stress and you can recover from that stress. You can you can respond to that stress. But if you find yourself in a stress cycle, that can be physically, mentally, and emotionally damaging to you. And that's what can lead to the downward spiral of burnout. People think that burnout only affects people in high roles. Oh, you have to be a CEO. You have to be an executive to experience stress. And that's 100% not the case. People see burnout as a phenomenon of work-related stress. But burnout can happen as a parent, as a student. If you're prolonged to chronic stress, if you feel that you're in a state that you can't control uh, different factors in your life, if you feel that there's too much of a workload and you're overwhelmed, or you're striving for perfection, and you have no control of the situation, that all those factors can lead to burnout. It doesn't have to be CEO, head of marketing, head of finance role. It could happen as a stay-at-home mom or dad. It can happen as a university student. It can happen as a high school student. It can happen 
as uh, work, working uh, in retail. It can happen in any role if you have a, a, a workload that you feel that you can't control, that is overwhelming you, and that you feel that you're underachieving, you're not up to the task. Maybe you're just, again, just exhausted from trying to keep up without setting boundaries for yourself. Another thing, people think that taking a break or just taking some time off, taking a vacation can cure burnout. Just take take a week off of, of work, you'll be fine. Have a long weekend, get some rest, you'll be fine in the morning. While taking some time off can be helpful, you can't cure burnout overnight. It's not a quick fix. And this is something that I learned the hard way. I was uh, I was prescribed with a month off work when I first burnt out. And I thought, I was like, look, this is four weeks off where I can have some time to myself and work on myself so that I can show up better in a month's time. And when I did, yes, I was a bit more refreshed and relieved, but I hadn't tackled the underlying cycle the burnout cycle and it only led to my relapse because I hadn't broken down the old habits that had gotten me to that burnout in the first place. I just went back in with a little bit more energy into the old cycle. So while taking a vacation, yes, is a good idea. It doesn't mean that you're curing your burnout just by taking some time off and relaxing. The old conditioned behaviors are still there. And if you don't break the old conditioned behaviors that led to burnout, then you are prone to relapsing again. Often people think that, oh, you have to be a certain personality type to burn out. It's only some people burn out. While some people are more prone to burning out because they have self-sabotaging behaviors, such as people pleasing and perfectionism, Everyone can be prone to burnout, no matter what your personality type. There are so many factors at play that if you just say that, oh, that person's an introvert, they're probably more prone to burnout, we won't employ them. Well, that person seems very extroverted, they've got high energy, yes, they're on my team because I know that they won't burn out ever. That's not the case. You can't just cherry pick people and say like oh that person i I know their personality type they will never burn out on me or if someone says they've burnt out it's like oh you can't really be experiencing burnout because you're not this personality type you're that personality type we have to come to a common ground where we can understand that everyone is vulnerable to burning out and we have to empathize with that and understand that if someone feels that they're burnt out You have to meet them with understanding and empathy and help them to take the next step forward. Take a step back. First, take a step back and take a breath and realize that, you know, again, self-awareness, self-compassion, and then take a step forward into your self-care journey. Now, I kept this episode short and snappy because I just want you to realize that, yes, there are a lot of misconceptions around burnout. But if we can have a greater awareness, a greater understanding of what burnout really is, if we can recognize the early signs of burnout, both in ourselves and in others, then we can address this and help people on the journey to recover together. If you want to dive deeper into this, you can get my ebook, Shine a Light on Burnout, to recognize the early warning signs of burnout here in the show notes. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you want to dive deeper you can always reach out at giveyourselfsomeleeway.com you can reach out on social media there or you can email me at eugene at leeway.ie thank you for listening and until next time take care